Welcome back everybody. We've got another video for you today and this one, it's in our rescue series uh, but the background for the technique that I'm going to show you comes from a military setting. Uh, and to give credit where credit's due, I didn't make this up but I learned how to do it a long time ago in a former life. Uh, it's a system that we used to use and is still in use today for helicopter or air repel type situations. What I'm going to show you how to do is create an expedient full body harness that you can either use yourself or put on somebody else in a casualty situation and we literally just need two lengths of one inch tubular mill spec type nylon webbing to build it. Okay. A few years ago I did a very quick and dirty video on this one and posted it up for a client overseas, uh, the intention being that it was purely for them. That wound up sort of going viral and the last time I looked it's been viewed many tens of thousands of times. It was pretty rough, the video I did then, and it was uh, a single take, no rehearsals, I just up and did it. I thought all these years later I might redo it again uh, and we'll include it in our YouTube channel video series. Um, I'll include a little bit more detail in this time as well. But this is the same one I did a few years ago, maybe just a little bit more refined. Um, we've included it in our rescue series, but it's got obvious applications in military and tactical use as well. Okay, so, so what's it all about? We're going to build a full body harness out of two segments of webbing. Over the years when I've shown people this, and I've shown many people all around the world, uh, consistently the response is that's the most user friendly uh, and certainly uh, the most expedient, uh, probably simplest to apply, um, but useful full body harness that they've ever seen. And as I say, I've been teaching people how to do this for a long time. So here we go. What do we need to build this harness and how's it going to work? I'm going to need two sections of webbing. Here's my two colour coded ones here. We've got a shorter one. This is going to be the upper half. And we've got a longer section, it's going to be the lower half, okay? In terms of sizing for different users, you're going to want to get some webbing and just try it out and work, because it's going to be different for everybody depending on height and build and what have you, whether you want to wear this over other equipment, it's going to be different all over. As a general guideline though for sizing, we can look at it as follows. The longer segment, which we're going to join with a overhand band, or water knot, whatever you want to call it, uh, is roughly, if I put my foot in the loop, should come up to about your nose, thereabouts. That's a rough guideline, okay? The shorter upper segment, again, joined with a overhand bend or a water knot, whichever you like, if I put my foot in the loop, it's going to roughly come up around where my navel is, maybe slightly higher, but certainly in that zone just there. And as I say, they're just rough guidelines. You're going to need to size the webbing for you and just play with it a little till you've got it worked out. These are my two demo segments that I've been using for a long time now and they're obviously set for length. So how's this going to work? We are going to do the bottom half first, so we're going to need the longer length. Okay. Typically, we're going to take the overhand bend in here. What I'm going to do is place it in the center of my back. It basically just gets it out of the way. We're going to bring the two loops in front like this and there's a little tricky bit here. Once you do it a couple of times it's pretty simple though. Grab those two, reach between your legs and pull that center section out so I've now got three loops in front. Okay. We're going to reach through the two loops on either side grabbing the loop in the center and the easiest way to describe this is I pull the loop out either side to create what you're looking at right now and then we're going to cycle the webbing like so and you can see the two side loops literally move away from one another because what I want to do is cycle them out until those two loops on either side are pretty much sitting on the bones of your hips, or just on your iliac crest, just there. So we cycle the webbing and they travel apart like so. Okay. Grab the two 
segments now in, uh, in the middle here, okay? Do all your adjustments, make sure everything is well seated and so forth. And if we've got our webbing set up correctly, we should have these crossover points just on the points of our hips. And the two points at confluence just here should roughly come into that area just below uh, your sternum just in here. So that little V in your rib cage is roughly where you want it. If it's too low, the thing's not going to work properly. And if it's too low, high, it's going to be too loose. And again, it won't work well. We want to get this thing set pretty snug to make it work correctly, okay? So about there is the correct position. That's step one. Now we're going to grab the shorter loop. This is obviously going to be the top half. And what I'm going to do is pass it straight through both of those loops in the lower half so I get this one here, okay? There's typically, and it doesn't matter which order you do it in then, but I usually get rid of the knot first, or the bend in this case. Um, I'm going to put my right arm and head through that loop. That gets rid of that, uh, in, uh, including the, the joining bend, over out of the way. So we're looking at that one there. Now we've got this loop on, in this case, my left hand side. There's a crucial little step in this and it's important that you get this, otherwise the whole thing won't work, okay? What we need to do is take this loop and you need to give it a half turn. It doesn't matter which way you do it, as long as you do it, all right? By that I mean a half turn like so. So it doesn't matter which way you go, as long as you give it a half turn like so. Now what you're going to do is put your other arm and your head through that hole there, like so. And the check here that we're going in the right direction is we should end up with this teardrop shape formation in the webbing just there. So this is a very definite teardrop shape with a hole in the middle. If you don't get that, the next bit won't work properly. And that's generated by that half twist that I just did then, okay? All right, so we're pretty close to being done. Now I'm going to grab my connector, in this case a locking carabiner, okay? And the trick with this one is, or a way to remember it I guess, is I'm going to engage the carabiner at this point here. I'm going to do the bottom half of the harness first and the top half second. And the way I always remember how to do this is I start on the left, I'm going to go left to right, lower, come up and then I'm going to go right to left, upper. Alrighty, so left to right on the lower segment, right to left on the upper segment, so like this. I'm going to open the gate of the connector, and I'm going to engage the point of the carabiner here from left to right through the upper segments only of the lower portion of webbing, and let the gate close, and rotate the carabiner around. So that's part one there, okay? Now what I'm going to do, opening the gate again, is I'm going to go from right to left that way, engaging these two upper sections. So like this, right to left, engage both of those. Just let the gate close. And you should end up with the carabiner pretty much buried under these four segments of webbing. All right, it'll be sitting there like that. The last thing we do, okay, and this is what makes it all work, that teardrop shape in the upper segment that I made reference to a moment ago, we deliberately pull it apart like that and pull the carabiner out and through. That's what sets our connector in position. And you can see here in side profile, it sits exactly where I want it, like so. Locked in position there, it won't move up or down or sideways. It's securely positioned and as you can see it sits beautifully straight out like so. I can now connect in a lanyard, a descent device, a rope, a strop, whatever you want, okay, um, and away we go. So that's locked in position there and we're good to connect in there, okay. So there we are. There's our expedient full body webbing harness, okay. Like I said in the start of the video, I didn't make it up, but this is what I used to use a long time ago. 
uh, back for air repel operations. It's obviously got applications in rescue as an expedient harness either for responders or for an injured person, assuming that their injuries don't preclude it. If you need it to move someone up, down, sideways, whatever you want, and all you've got is some webbing, you can build a harness straight up. Okay? Thanks again. Look forward to seeing you in future videos, and uh, stay safe.